This is the audio and video version of the blog post titled Seven Secrets to Finding Anything with a Google Search. This is Maria Piegler with SocialMediaOnlineClasses.com and if you're listening to the audio version of this, you can also find the blog post and the video version on the SocialMediaOnlineClasses.com blog. Uh, if you are like me, you use Google search daily, sometimes multiple times a day. And in this brief video and audio, I am going to show you how to get more out of every Google search you do by telling it exactly what you do and don't want. Uh, using an online search, whether you use Google or Bing or Yahoo or an anonymous search engine like DuckDuckGo, uh, is one of the best ways that you can find solutions for your business to find good resources and tools and I will tell you that I am so specific in my online searches that I can find resources that nobody else knows about and so that's what I'm gonna show and tell you how to do today so I'm gonna share with you seven tactics the first one is how to search for an exact phrase so let's say that you're searching for Social media online classes. You want to look for classes on social media that are online and you want exactly that phrase in that order. To do that, you're going to type that phrase in quotes. So quote, social media online classes, end quote, press enter. And what will happen is Google will show you or any search engine will show you results using that exact phrase in that order and that's important you won't see online classes and social media you won't see online social media classes social media courses it's just going to be results that have those words together in that order social media online classes and so you can see here um, the first two results that are not ads actually the first one two three four Four, five results are for socialmediaonlineclasses.com, not surprisingly. Now, I am doing this search in what's called incognito mode in Google, which means that I am not signed into Google. It doesn't know who I am, so it's not showing these results to me because I own social media online classes. It doesn't know me from anybody. So that's the first type of search you can do is in quotes now let's say that you're just starting out and you want to do a broad search of the same phrase but you you want to see what's out there and you don't really you know the, those words don't have to appear together or in that order well what you're going to use then instead of quotes are brackets so it'll be bracket social media online classes another bracket you're gonna press enter and again, you're going to see um, results that include those words, but not necessarily together and not necessarily in that same order. And so the results that you get here are very different. Yes, socialmediaonlineclasses.com is first, but there's also something called DIY Genius, Online Marketing Institute, Bootcamp Digital, um, Allison.com, and more. And so you're seeing a wider variety of results because you're telling Google or whatever search engine, I just want to see these words on that page somewhere. So let's take a look at searching within a specific website. This is one of my favorite search tactics and I use it a lot. So, for example, what I'm going to do here is I'd like to search Twitter for to see what journalists use it. Now, I don't want to see people ranting about, you know, the journalists they don't like. I only want to see real journalists. So, what I'm going to do is say site twitter.com space and in quotes put journalist. And when I press enter, what it's going to show me is uh, tweets about a journalist hashtag, people who have journalists in their Twitter account name, or it's in um, their bio, or it could be a tweet about a journalist. But it's only results from Twitter. You can do this for any social network. You can do it um, for Facebook, LinkedIn. You can even do it for Instagram and Pinterest. 
visual social networks. You can do it for sites that aren't a social network. You could um, search Forbes. You could search Etsy. You could search Amazon. You know, you can search any site for something specific. And using this site parameter will return only results from that website. This is my favorite tactic for getting results that I trust from a source I know. So the next search tactic that I like to do is to, let's see, I'm going to search for something called engagement hacks. And um, here I can see that I've got, um, and I just typed engagement hacks, that's it. And so it's showing me three results, it's showing me some images, but what I really want to see is only the most recent recent results. So what I want to do is um, go to the toolbar here in Google and I'm going to click on search tools and there's a little drop down that says anytime and I want to see results only from the past month. And so here what it shows me are things that occurred six days ago. With I'm doing this in March so it's only showing me results from March. And so this is important if you need to find something that is relatively recent or if you know it was in a specific time frame. You can specify um, any time, the past hour, the past 24 hours, week, month, year, or a custom range. So it really, really allows you to get very granular with your search. The other thing that you can do with these search tools is change your location. So... Uh, because I'm doing it in incognito mode right now, it's not showing me any localized results. But if you're signed into Google, it's going to show you results from your area first. And most of the time you want that, but sometimes you don't. So you can change your city by also using those search tools. Now here are the last, the last several ones are some of my favorite strategies, and I use these a lot. Let's say that I want to search for a Facebook marketing infographic. Well, the first thing it's going to show me are several images, but then it's going to show me a whole lot of different um, results from different websites. And the thing is, I don't know who to trust on these. You know, if it's a visual, I want to see it. So you can click on this Google toolbar and click on images, and it's going to show you only images. Even You would think it would do this anyway if you're asking for an infographic, but um, it doesn't. And so you can get only images by uh, clicking on that image qualifier in the toolbar. And I will tell you, I use this even when I'm not looking for something graphic. Because these days everybody is a publisher online. There's a lot of people publishing content and a lot of it is junk. And one of the real ways that you can tell what quality articles are from the rest, even if they rank highly in Google search, is the quality of their images. And so if I'm looking for something, um, a research article, or if I'm trying to learn something, I will click on images and see who really put a lot of time and thought into the image that went with their article. And nine times out of ten, it leads me to something that's very high quality. Another one of my favorite searches is the related search because this allows you to find something that's similar to something that you already know about. And I'll give you an example. Um, Y'all know I do a lot of infographics and I've been looking at different tools for kind of branching out and doing different kinds of infographics. And I was trying out a tool called PictoChart. And it's an online tool that you can use to create infographics. And I tried it out, and it was great, but it wasn't really what I needed. So what I did was a related search. I typed in Google related colon pictochart.com. So if you type in related colon and then the name of the website or the name of the article or whatever it is that you're trying to find, Google will show you results that are most closely related to that. So it's showing me visually.com where you can create infographics easily, an article on five tools for creating your own infographics, 10 free tools for creating infographics. So I'm seeing a lot of other things that allow me 
to create my own infographics. Uh, I will tell you that I use this related search parameter a lot. And here's why. Some of the best resources you will find online are some of the ones that are buried. You would think that if something's really good, it's going to appear on the first page of search results, but that's not always the case. And sometimes some of the best resources and the best people I have found to work with come from a related search. So this is one of my favorite buried treasure searches. And then I've got two more searches. One is a bonus that's not on the infographic, and I'm going to leave that until last. Um, another one that you can do is to look for videos. So I'm going to type in Hootsuite how to. I want to learn how to use Hootsuite. And so um, it's showing me an ad from Hootsuite, and then there's like this help guide from Hootsuite. But frankly, I don't want a guide from Hootsuite because I don't find that they're very helpful. So I want to find a video. And so if I go to videos here in the search bar, I can click on it and it's going to show me the videos that are available on YouTube. Now it's showing me my own video first. Um, that's because I knew that this video would show up first in the search. But sometimes the, the videos that show as the most popular are not necessarily the, um, the highest quality. So this is not, it's, it's a helpful search, but it's frankly not one of my favorites because the search parameter, looking at videos, it's helpful, um, but it's, it's not, not always the most um, relevant results. One of the things I really do like is you can click right from, from the search results to watch the video, and it also tells you how long the video is. Lastly, this is one of my favorite things. Um, if you want to do a search, but you want to disqualify some of the results, you can tell any search engine where you don't want it to search for. And let me give you an example. I was doing a search for something on for something Pinterest related. I wanted to see, I can't even remember what it was now. I think it was Pinterest images, but I didn't want the search results from Pinterest itself because what it was showing me was stuff that was just not related at all. So I'm using, I'm searching for Pinterest images and then space dash Pinterest.com. And it's actually that dash, it's the minus sign, tells the search engine, don't search Pinterest.com. And so if I go to the web here, it's going to show me different things about creating Pinterest images, but not things that I would find on the Pinterest social network. It's, it's about Pinterest, but it's not on Pinterest. There are a lot of times that you're going to want to use this um, to qualify the results and do them on a more narrow basis. So that's my bonus tip, how to, how to disqualify um, a site or say you don't want search results from that particular website. Use that minus sign in front of the name of the website. This is Maria Piegler with SocialMediaOnlineClasses.com on the seven secrets you can use to find anything on Google search and you can find um, the audio, the video, and the article on our blog at SocialMediaOnlineClasses.com.